Hello there and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Well here I am hunkered down in my hidden patio. Those of you who follow this channel will know that when I bought this house it was an electric garden but I thought this part was a lawn like the rest of the area and I was dead wrong. When the month of May or June came and the, the weather started to heat up I'd get dieback, brown patches and this part up here was absolutely awful. It was so so ugly. So the first thing I decided to do was what anybody would do. Increase the water because it was hot. Yeah, not getting a very good result. So then I increased the feed. Anyone would have been happy with that. Not this guy. He didn't want that either. So then, suddenly, I had the light bulb moment. If it hasn't got to do with water, and it hasn't got to do with feed, it must be lack of depth of soil. So I got out my trusty spearhead spade and went, stabbed it into the ground, and it went clang. And I said, oh my goodness. Down here, underneath, something is a foot below the level of the soil, below the grass. So I began to dig it out. And I found the first massive big paver. It looked actually quite nice, quite beautiful, the stone. So I said, I wonder how far this goes. So over the next few weeks, I started cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning until eventually I discovered a massive big patio that had been hidden for goodness knows how many years underneath the lawn, what we all thought was lawn. Obviously, because of neglect, little bits of soil come in, little bits of dust settle and the grass encroaches more and more and more until it eventually covers it completely up. And look what it had covered up, an entire length of patio. Now, because I live in the mountains, I have extreme temperatures, both in winter and in summer. And additionally, of course, these are pavers. So in summer, you get 100 degrees beating down on top of them and you get radiant heat coming back up. So I have to take all of these things into consideration. So I chose four plants for different reasons. And the four plants were, the first one, violets. Why violets? They grow so well in this garden, they're actually going rampant. And also next to the retaining wall, I do have quite shady areas. Number two was campanula. Why campanula? Well, it was my mother's favorite flower and it gets a free ticket because that's the way it is. It's my garden. Then, the other two were the real main contenders. One of them was moss phlox, and the other was creeping masses, or masses reptans. So I'm now going to give you the results of those four plants. Now the first thing we're going to have a look at, violets. Violets are very sparse in winter, but very, very lush for the rest of the year, with lots of leaves going on. The only thing I'm not particularly crazy about is the ratio between the leaf and the flower. For my liking, not enough flowers for the amount of leaves. But is there a place for it on my patio? Yes. And I'll tell you why. Back here, I've got a retaining wall and it goes the full length of the patio. And it creates shade over this area very earlier on in the day and it goes the whole way through the rest of the day. So I have an area that's practically in shade most of the day. So if I plant it well back, it's definitely got its place. It grows well in the shade and despite the fact that it's taller, the fact that it's against this wall doesn't make a blind bit of difference because nobody walks brushing against the wall. They walk in the middle of the path, at least one supposes they walk in the middle of the path. So having these plants in a shady area is perfect for me in this circumstance. Plant number two is Campanula. Just pulling out some of the grass here between us. It's covering in nicely. It started off as a little plug. It's cover covering in nicely, if not very fast. But of course, as I said before, it gets a free plant. It's my mother's flower and therefore it's in my garden. I'll show you one that's just coming into bloom now. See, this one has got a mass of buds just coming into flower and with the next week it's going to be a mass of gorgeous flowers. Now the next flower is Phlox Subulata Emerald Cushion Blue. But because life's too short for those mouthfuls, let's call it Moss Phlox, which is its common name. Now this plant remains evergreen all year around, although in the cold of the winter it looks more like a fossilised uh, evergreen and a bit twiggy. But when spring comes round, it fluffs out and it really does fluff out. It looks absolutely gorgeous and soft and it puts on the most glorious display of flowers. This one is now past its best, well past its best, but at its best there are so many flowers you can't even see the leaves. It does spread out quite a bit, but slow. The only con is it's quite tall, so it's okay if you have huge big pavers. Not great when you've got small ones. And the last one is Creeping Massos. In winter, it is definitely nothing to write home about. It looks bronzy, brown, and almost mushy in places. But once spring began, it sprung into action, greened up and produced a lovely display of flowers. It looks like little insects with folded wings. A perfect balance between leaf and flower for me. 
but best of all it hogs the ground. In summer it's does spread, covering new ground, all the cracks, all the crevices, and it does overlap the pavers. But it is so easy, you just lift it up and it goes snip, 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 snip. It's that easy. With your little secretaries, more better with your snips. And I only do that about once a month and it's fine. Despite 100 degrees Fahrenheit plus in summer and the residual heat from the pavers and the fact that it's growing over the pavers, it wasn't affected in the slightest. Absolutely amazing. And the one thing I do like, the best thing, it hugs the ground and it hugs the contour of the paver stones. It looks absolutely beautiful. Now we just tilt the camera up. You can see the area that I planted with this plant. See the beautiful contours around? Isn't that just gorgeous? So this for me is my winner. Based on the fact that it lies low, so you don't trip all over it. It's got pretty flowers and the ratio between flower and leaf is brilliant. It fills up the gaps very easily. It can withstand very hot summers and residual heat from the pavers. So today I'm going to plant some more. Okay, so in this box are the nine plants I bought of the Massus Reptans, or the Creeping Massus. You can see they're on like skewer-like little objects. This is basically, the box is very well measured, and if this is turned on the side, this is the way they arrived. The little skewer part makes contact and actually gently pierces the side, so there's absolutely no movement whatsoever for ease of transport. Dead easy, dead simple, very effective. Now, I'm not going to be putting the plants in this part, because this is already creeping. From where this is at the moment, this will creep all over this area and in here. I've got to remove this obviously so it can continue creeping. And this is going to creep out as well. So they'll meet somewhere in the middle and cover all of this area. The same thing, for instance, here. What I'll do is fill up this with a bit of soil so it's on the same level. And let this creep out. And this will eventually creep through this little crack. And again, meet up somewhere in the centre with this. So I'll be removing the weed, topping it up with soil and letting these two meet throughout the growing season. Same thing here, it's already on its way. It's made its way along this crack and will soon finish this area here. Same thing here. So what I'm going to be doing today is starting new areas. I'll probably start one here so it can go backwards and go forwards and then get to the really wide area of the patio which has basically got nothing at all in us. See all these massive areas to be done. Well, I'll spot the nine of them out and hopefully during the growing season they're going to start matting together. I probably won't have enough now to finish it but at least if I get this section here done that'll be my aim for today.
Well, that's all nine plants planted. As you can see, I've now raised the level of the soil. It was sort of like holes and nooks and crannies. Now it's just below the level of the stone so that when these tendrils start coming out and touching the soil, they can easily touch and make new roots down below without having to sink down and they're going to be all on the same level. So looking forward now during this growing season to seeing these tendrils extending out and this way as well, extending that way and meet somewhere in the middle. Probably by the end of this year, there'll be somewhere around about here Still a little gap to go, but by next year this is going to be full and beautiful. Just one word of caution before we finish this video. A creeper is exactly what it says on the tag. It creeps. And if you don't keep it in check, it's going to creep and take over everything. Just the same way in its day, that lawn over there took over the entire patio and became hidden beneath. So, all you've got to do, once a month, no more, give it a quick snip and keep it in check. Apart from that, I hope to see you here next week with me in Granny's Garden. Bye-bye now.